the AT&T Center here in San Antonio, Texas, home to the defending Western Conference champions, the Silver Stars, who have been without their all-star guard, Becky Hammond, for the past two games. Tonight, she returns to the lineup just in time to meet the league's most explosive offense, led by one of the superstars of the WNBA, Diana Taurasi. It's Phoenix taking on San Antonio in the shadow of the Alamo. Straight ahead. Come out game, rebound, and push. Point to Rossi is a massive helper. She helps in so many situations. Okay, the ball movement will help us, and our activity level will help us. The head coaches, Corey Gaines and Dan Hughes, some last-minute words of advice in the locker room for their teams as we welcome you to the AT&T Center here in San Antonio. Phoenix, the first of three on the road. San Antonio, the first of four at home. Phoenix off to a great start, but the team with the best record in the league last year, the Silver Stars, struggling to start out. They are just one and three on the new season. And hi again, everybody. Terry Gannon, along with the Hall of Famer, Nancy Lieberman, San Antonio. Antonio one and three you wouldn't believe it but it's a bit misleading Nancy because they've been without Becky Hammond the last couple of games she's been playing for the Russian national team Vicki Johnson's been out because of a death in her family they're back in the lineup tonight well they need to be back in the lineup because Dan Hughes misses Becky's 18 points a game and what VJ does is immeasurable in the stat sheet her leadership and also they're missing Ann Waters their great center who will not be back until the end of July you know about Becky Hammond representing Russia in the last Last Olympics. Well, she's still representing them. With more on that, let's check in with Rebecca Lobo right now. Well, Terry, Becky Hammond spent the past week in Latvia playing in the European Championships for the Russian national team. She played four games in five days and just returned to the States on Sunday. She rested Sunday and yesterday and said that she's excited to get back on the court for the Silver Stars. And her body feels pretty good. But guys, remember, Latvia is seven hours ahead of San Antonio. So for Becky's body clock, this game is being played at 1.30 a.m. Yeah, Rebecca, and if fatigue is a factor, guess what? They get the league's most explosive offense. And Diana Taurasi, who's the second leading scorer in the WNBA tonight. She's absolutely amazing. What Diana can do offensively, great three-point shooter. She will push the pace of this game. Check out the starting lineups for tonight here inside the AT&T Center as we get set for the Mercury and the Silver Stars. Tamika Johnson's been great at the point guard along with Pondexter, Taurasi, Nicole Willingham, Tangela Smith inside and for San Antonio Hammond is back Helen Darling the veteran Vicki Johnson in the lineup Sophia Young has played very well along with Ruth Riley who is a force in the middle the 10th year player from Notre Dame too early to call it a must win for San Antonio but they have to get back on track it gets late very early in the WNBA so we're underway and San Antonio controls the opening tip. Helen Darling, the eight-year player from Penn State, getting a start tonight. Johnson looks to go back door to Young, who chases it down in the corner. Darling along the baseline. No one stepped in to help. It's 2-0 San Antonio. Helen Darling doesn't score a lot of points, and the Mercury have gone from more of a rover zone defense this year to more aggressive man-to-man. -man. Look to get after you defensively much more. It's Darling starting on Tarazi to start the game. Johnson throws it away, the first turnover of the game. The one thing for me, Terry, with San Antonio is the fact they're averaging almost 11 points less a game than they did a year ago. They need to find that, that third and fourth primary scorer if they're going to be effective. San Antonio has not scored more than 61 points in any of their last three games. Strip along the baseline, Johnson almost took it away. Four on the shot clock, Becky Hammond's going to let it fly. Inside, it's Nika. 
And the shot clock violation gives it back to the Mercury. Head coach for the Phoenix Mercury, Corey Gaines, who was on the bench as an assistant to Paul Westhead, and he's still playing Paul Ball. I like it. I like the fact that they're a non-traditional type of coaching style. They push tempo. You almost have to learn how to play the game differently when you play for them. Good find to Tarazi, who got loose on the back door. Her first deuce of the game. Oh, that time, Tarazi slipped the pick. If you're going to switch the pick, just go to the front of the rim if you're an offensive player. Johnson with the miss. Nicole Willingham chased it down, had it knocked away. So here's Becky Hammond. Have to watch her energy level throughout the game. Dan Hughes is going to stick with her and also watch it. Riley gathered herself inside. Ruth Riley, the veteran from Notre Dame with an easy deuce. All she knows how to do is win Ruth Riley at the collegiate level and in the WNBA as Tarasi gets yet another three, 451 in her career. She has shot 46% from beyond the arc this year. She's been red hot in the last three games. Well, Diana's fourth all-time in the league in threes. It's Becky Hammond's ahead of her. She just might pass her all in one night. <laughs> yeah, well. She's 30 short. <laughs> she might need a few more than she'll get tonight. Turnover, giving it back to the Mercury, and they're going to run. I mean, they're going to look to run whether they have numbers or not. Happy Pondexter. Wiley with the clear. Will San Antonio look to run with them? They can't. They have got to slow it up and play half-court basketball. A reach-in foul on Tamika Johnson. Her first and the team's first. So smart of Becky Hammond. Or this is the play before with Diana Tarazi as she slipped the pick. They, if they're going to switch it, she must go to the rim. She's got exceptional range and she'll own every record, Terry, in this league by the time she's done from, from scoring, minutes, maybe even championships. Becky Hammond at the line. First miss. She's averaging 18 points again. One of the all-time great free throw shooters in the league. I, was, I mean, each year she is in the uh, either low 90s or high 80s. And, you know, that's really a, a sentence for you to harm yourself if you put Becky to the foul line. Quick hands by Hammond. Take it away. Here comes Johnson. Second turnover by the Mercury. Yeah, Becky shot 93.7% last year. She led the league. It's a sagging man-to-man. It's really almost reminiscent, uh, reminiscent of, of a zone because you're going to let him take the outside shot. You want to take the drive away. Becky Johnson has played almost 400 games in this league. She's amazing. I mean, Most consistent player for someone you really don't know. Hondexter strong to the hoop. She's averaging about 19 points a game. Kathy hasn't shot the ball all that well from three-point range. Been dealing with a stomach virus. Maybe the energy level not quite as high as you'd expect, but she's still putting up numbers. And she puts up great numbers, but I also asked her about that. She said she had a reaction to some iodine that she had taken and when she was in the hospital. It said it actually shut down her air passages. And she's now stopped taking the medicine because she has been very lethargic on the court. Ruth Riley just does beat the shot clock. She's got four. It's a two-point lead for San Antonio. And there's the third turnover by the Mercury. So, so, red pop curl for her. Red pop curl. All right, Dan Hughes, Mike tonight. And Corey Gaines also wired for sound. They're going with red pop curl. So watch for that here, Dan. Red pop curl is one of the best sets that San Antonio has. They have great sets. A lot of it starts off screens. There's the high screen for Darling around Riley, but the miss. And here comes Johnson, who's made a big difference. The fact that they have a true point guard now. Well, she's a different point guard than Kelly Miller, who was very effective when they won the championship a couple of years ago. Five turnovers already by the Mercury. Corey Gaines doesn't really mind that, though. Good look inside. Johnson on the receiving end. He minds that, by the way, because the Mercury don't want to give the ball up and then get hurt in transition when they don't have good lanes to recover. A 6-0 run by the Silver Stars. Johnson, the fifth-year player from LSU, spent three years with the Sparks and came over in a trade in March. Lost out of bounds. Goes back to the Mercury. Well, anytime they come down, San Antonio, you have to know they're a half-court team. They're going to send somebody to the front of the rim. They're very good at making the extra pass. Yeah, the extra pass that time from Sophia Young, who draws all of the attention. She averages about 18 points a game. 
two-time All-Star from San Antonio. Tantara Smith with the miss. Here comes Darling. Superstars are looking to run. They're not slowing it down. Well, they'll run selectively if they have the numbers. They don't have it. They, they set it back out. This is where Becky Hammond becomes the point guard, not in transition, but in the half court. Here's the head. You want to bother the rookie. From Auburn, coming out defensively. Johnson, a tough shot. Let's go, let's go, let's Phoenix go. will let her take that all night. D, spotting up, got the screen, and buys another one. Diana Tarazzi, two for two from beyond the arc. She has NBA range with her shot. She is so physically strong, and she's playing at a weight, 158 pounds. This oh. is the lighter she's been since she was a senior in high school. Speaking of cardio and losing some weight, Becky Hammond, who gets it off the glass from Riley, has also only lost about seven pounds, but there's a noticeable difference in her, her body type. Well, Tanya Holly, who is the uh, trainer here, she went to her team in Russia. And if you look at Ann Waters, and if you look at Katie Douglas, and then you look at Becky Hammond, you can see the work that she did with their bodies while they were in Europe in the off Well, it is their season, it's right, our so. off-season. Great look from Johnson to Sophia Young, the third-year player from Baylor. The San Antonio clicking like they have it in the last three games, up by five. Terry, this is in a normal situation, a coach would call a timeout. Corey Gaines, the non-traditional coach, wants to play through this and keep the, the pace up high. Hey, it worked for Phil Jackson, huh? Yes, it did. Little Zen magic. San Antonio shooting 58% so far from the floor. Riley, nice pass. Somehow handle it to the left hand off the glass and in. Just lead for the Silver Stars. Becky Hammond's presence on the court just opens up lanes for opposite for players on her team to get good shots. Well, Helen Darling took a, an elbow right to the chest that time. Tarazi with a miss. Back to her! Hammond off the heel. Frantic pace. We're down to the three-minute mark already. We haven't had a stoppage. Tarazi and the foul. And the first on Helen Darling. So Becky Hammond back in the lineup for the Silver Stars. It's made a difference already. They lead at home by seven. Hughes in the huddle, San Antonio off to a good start. A seven-point lead over Phoenix. You mentioned Becky Hammond playing for the Russian national team. She missed the last two games. European championships held in Riga, Latvia. There was controversy when she represented them at the Olympics. How about this time around? We asked her about it and asked Diana Tarazi. I have to keep things in perspective, and I tried to weigh out everything for San Antonio, for the Russian team, and my teammates on both sides. You know, I wanted to consider all their feelings and uh, weigh this, the situation according to how they would feel and how would I feel if somebody did the same thing, and just go through the uh, scenarios of all the what ifs. And um, this was the best thing. Um, it was the best decision, and it was the right decision. When it comes to American sports, people are so one way about it. I mean, European soccer, guys leave for the national team, you know, throughout the, the UEFA Cup and, and the Champions League. And these are players making, you know, $80 million. Uh, you know, sometimes you have more than one commitment. That's life. I think that's a good point. I mean, it does happen, for example, in soccer, the Premier League. Guys go to their national team. What's your take on it? Well, when I first heard about it, I was just disappointed that she was going to leave San Antonio and go and play in the championships. And the more I've thought about it, today's player, they do have dual loyalties. It's very unusual to people like me and you who played for one institution or one professional team. And it's a different time and it's a different era. And in, in really kind Kind of observing and thinking about it she did nothing wrong she did what she thought was best and i think there is a difference between that and the olympics when you're representing a different country you become a russian citizen you may play against the united states this was the european championships i talked to her teammates too aaron perperiglou the former aaron busher she said oh no there was no problem we knew he just told her get back fast we need you and i think what you're saying is correct because from the players around the league that i spoke to and dan hughes everybody was okay with it so why shouldn't we be okay with it? Han Dexter, there's a three. We mentioned she struggled beyond the arc. She was one for 13 prior to that shot. 
Well, if Phoenix can pick up their offense and get the ball to, to Rossi and to Pondexter, they've got to shut it down defensively. They're being annihilated in the paint with that backdoor cut. Paraglu can't get the layup off the great dish from right, Sophia Young. Aaron, who is, oh, you know her as Aaron Busher. She got married in the offseason. Stratos, her husband, plays professional basketball in Greece. They got married in a civil ceremony there. Last Wednesday, had one in a church here with her teammates. And they're going to have a formal wedding in Greece again in the near future. Three okay. weddings. How okay. about that? There's got to be, we've been talking about what Becky Hammond did going over to Russia or playing for the Russian team. You can't get three different sets of gifts. <laughs> I don't care how many times you change your name or get married. You, you get one gift. Three different groups of people. There's Stratos watching. There's got to be rules. Well, apparently there aren't in terms of weddings. <laughs> Have as many as you like. Luana Bonner, who's been a big addition here. Fifth overall pick in the draft this year. Nicole Oldies come off the bench. She lost the rebound and hit from the Silver Stars. And Weiss lost in late off the bench for Dan Hughes. I think uh, that Sophia Young really has to get some shots up. That's a shot that she has developed over the last couple of years. Taking it outside to the perimeter much more, right? Oh, my gosh. When she played at Baylor, just her speed and quickness and rebounding around the basket was really her calling card. This young lady has more upside than virtually any player in the league because she is just learning how to take her game outside and almost to the three-point line now consistently. Wazi misses for the first time from three-point range, and Oldie lost the rebound. I'm going to keep it here, though. How do you like the additions for Phoenix? Nicole Oldie, the six-year player who came over in a trade with Minnesota for Kelly Miller and Latoya Pringle and the drafting of uh, Dewana Bonner. Absolutely love the moves that Ann Myers made with this basketball team because Bonner's going to give you that surge in energy on both ends of the floor. Oldie's footwork is like Tim Duncan, and then you have that true point guard in both Swanye and in uh, Tamika Johnson. Yeah, Keisha Swanye from UConn, also on the floor right now. Our calendar just getting underway in the WNBA. LA at Seattle at 10 o'clock Eastern on Friday on NBA TV. And then we are in Atlanta from Minnesota and Atlanta next week, Tuesday, 7 o'clock Eastern. And Sacramento and Seattle on ESPN 2 July 9th at 9 o'clock Eastern time. Minnesota, Atlanta, pretty good matchup. It's going to be a fantastic matchup. And uh, I look at what Marinelle Metters did with uh, the Atlanta Dreams. She totally revamped their whole lineup. And, you know, you get Andrew McCautry and then the number one pick. And then you bring back Shemiko Holtzclaw, who has been an all-star many, many years, five years, I believe, in the WNBA. Yeah, pretty good offseason. They're a factor now. There's no question about it. Silver Stars have missed their last four shots from the floor. Inside, fuck it up and good. Katie Matera, the former Katie Feenstra. So a couple players uh, getting married in the offseason. Uh, I think that the Stars upside this season, once everybody gets healthy and back, they're going to have a chance to contend, you know, for that championship they had a year opportunity for a year ago. Up and under move, Nicole Oldie, and that's what she gives you. That's what she'll give the Mercury inside, which is certainly with their running style, you need to still have an inside game. Uh, I, I agree with you. I, I have liked Nicole Oldie since she was at K-State. Her counter moves are absolutely Duncan-esque, and they make you look silly. Shot clock off, game clock under 10. Hammond taking a look. Closely guarded conduct for Becky somehow finds a way to get open all the time. That'll do it in the first. Phoenix on a 9-2 run to close the first. So it's 19 all, and Becky Hammond and the Silver Stars had a couple of 6-0 runs, but we are all square at the end of the first quarter. By seven at one point is look at Campy Pondexter, who's uh, been a factor offensively, but also the bench playing very well so far for Corey Gates. And I think you're absolutely right because Oldie came in, made a nice move, and you also had Swanye and Bonner just giving you high levels of energy. Phoenix plus nine from beyond the arc as they swing it around. Kelly Mazzani, who can shoot it and does. One for one coming right off the bench for Phoenix. 
That's just good coaching by Corey Gaines. You know that Dan Hughes is going to switch his defense coming out of the timeout. They trap out front on the zone. You must reverse I know, it I to know. your shooter, and that's Mizanti. Mizanti, the all-time leading scorer in Big Ten history, man or woman, from Penn State. Belinda Snell off the bench, and she goes quickly to the hoop. Caught an elbow in their last game and received stitches. Came back in that game, though, and playing tonight. Four run by Phoenix as Tarazi tries to add to that and can. It's a pretty big lineup on the on the floor for Phoenix. They're big on the perimeter because Mizanti is about six foot herself. Young left open for a moment. High flying one-handed rebound by Tarazi. Hey, Diana has a lot more athleticism than people think. Go, and go, go, go. She blocks a lot of shots. She goes hard, and she makes things happen. And she always gets on the highlight. You heard the go, go, go. That was Dan Hughes. They they would like to run some tonight and give Phoenix a little dose of their own. Oh, the no look from Snell blocked underneath, out of bounds, with eight on the shot clock. All right, watch Diana, how aggressive she is attacking the rim. She's coming from the weak side. She's the one who goes up. She's big. She's strong. You don't want to get hit by her. You get the two bigs tangled up battling for it, and in comes Tarazi flying for the rebound. Exactly, and uh, D is pretty strong. San Antonio field goals. The ten field goals all in the paint. Listen out! And a violation giving it back. Three foot to Mercury. Four. That was great Three defense. Tangela Smith did an unbelievable Three. job denying and not allowing that pass to get in. And, and that's what you have to do. You want additional possession. Didn't Corey Gaines tell us at to practice today? He was hoping to get in the mid 80s. They've been getting about 72 a game. Bonner, Snell on the reach, the foul. And that's the first on uh, Belinda, fourth year player from Australia. Auburn coach Nell Fortner, who coached Bonner at Auburn, said to us, you know, during the, the collegiate season, that she could play all five positions. And seeing her in the WNBA, there's a lot of credence to that. Riley back off the bench for Katie Matera. Dexter, a step on Young, the floater can't buy it. Tipped out of bounds, it will stay here with Phoenix. So Duana Bonner uh, back in the game, the rookie from Auburn. You've got more on her, Rebecca? Guys, you talk about Dewana Bonner being able to play all five positions. I asked Kathy Pondexter about Dewana, and the first thing she said was, woo, she can do it all. She called her a baby KG, comparing KG to when he first came in the league. She said she brings great positive energy. She's going to be a great player. She said even though she's really slight of frame, she's, her heart is really big. When she gets knocked down, she gets right back up. Her teammates love her, guys. Wait, give me that first line again. Woo! Yeah, that one. Riley on top. How do you spell that? I don't know. <laughs> Quick hands by Pondexter took it away. I think San Antonio is doing a wonderful job of getting back. That's one of the few times they didn't get back in transition. Mazzani spotting up in transition beyond the arc. She's two for two there. Phoenix is a vertical basketball team. That means that they want to push tempo. If you're seeing the backs of the Phoenix Mercury jerseys, you're in trouble. Easy laying underneath. Megan Frazee, the rookie from Liberty with the early do. She's a triplet, you know. Well, there's a lot of triplets out here. Uh, Helen Dorling, her kids are triplets. Frazee is a triplet, as you just mentioned. They mentioned the backs of the jerseys of Phoenix. The front, of course, you've been paying attention, is Tangela Smith. Knocks down the three, is LifeLock. And that's a big story when they decided to do that. LifeLock, the identity theft protection company, and then we're seeing more teams start to go to that. That's going to be something you see in this league. I hope we see it more, but I give Todd Davis, who's the CEO of LifeLock, a lot of credit. He was the first. And, you know, his company really wanted to associate with the loyalty and the fanatical fan. Those are who the WNBA people are, the fans are. And he thought, you know what, it's a chance to reach 
a fan base, and he wanted that his company associated with them. And I had a chance to talk to him yesterday. He said I was a casual WNBA fan. He says, now I am a fanatic. I am there. I am going nuts, and I love it. Crazy. They're beyond the arc. Gave it the inside game and now takes it outside for a three. Becky Hammond back in the game to lead the Silver Stars as they take a one-point lead. Dexter around the screen, gets a step inside, gets it back, can't buy it, tries again, and this time gets the roll. Kenny Pondexter is big, she's strong, she's afraid of nobody on the basketball court, and she's a marvelous rebounder on both ends. Riley underneath, we've seen that time and again from the Silver Stars. Because the Mercury are breaking down on the weak side, the top guard has to either drop, or you must get on that split line, as we call it, and be right under the rim. Oh, 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 oh. Pressure! Damn you want pressure. Here we go, here we go! Trainer, Reagan! Trainer! San Antonio on the run as their coach tries to push that ball up and the foul on Tangela Smith. Kathy Pondexter, big game so far. The fourth year player out of Rutgers gave her and Dinah Taraji a camera. They went backstage on the recent road trip. We'll take a look in a moment. And that was just yesterday on the bus. They uh, were on the way here. Hey, we gave her the camera. Do we know if we got it back? <laughs> hey, that's a good point. I, I, know, know. I mean, I know she gives up about three and a half assists a game, but I don't <laughs> think she's passing that back to ESPN. Tarazi had it, gave it to Kathy Pondexter. Together, they combined for 19 points in this game so far. The league leader in points per game, the Phoenix Mercury, 92 per game. And those guys, they account for about 50% of the, the Phoenix Mercury points, so they have to take the volume of the shots within that offense. Foul called on Tangela Smith, her second, and the second team foul, sending Ruth Riley to the free throw line. Riley won an Olympic gold in Athens, two WNBA titles with Detroit. She's the type of player, Terry, that you have to have on your basketball team. She's a terrific passer. She's a great screener. She is an impeccable teammate to have, and she gets the selfishness. She, she's, she's the one that is willing to give up some of her game to make you better. How about Detroit? Bill Lambeer stepping down, huh? You know what? He talked about it at the end of last season during the playoffs that maybe it was time he wanted to give Cheryl Reeves and also Ricky Mahorn their due on the bench, and he wants that next-level job. He wants an NBA opportunity. Tipped out, and the turnover giving it back to Phoenix. Oh, Rick Mahorn taking over with the defending WNBA champ. Bill Curtin also added. So it'll be interesting to see what Bill Lambeer does. And he's, he's said, I do want to coach in the NBA. Well, I think that there will be some teams that will have interest in him. Mazzanti, another three. He's come off the bench to do one thing, and that is shoot the three. Let it go. And Belinda Snell has to know that because she comes in the game to shoot the three. Answer, Belinda Snell. On cue, Nancy. Thank you, Belinda. A former Phoenix Mercury player. I believe she has a ring from that championship team. You saw the scar right there, the uh, elbow that she caught in that last game against Connecticut. Tarazi with the miss. Vicky Johnson runs it down. San Antonio lost to Connecticut on the road, 71-58. Phoenix lost to Seattle, 93-84. So both teams coming off of an L. Crazy. Can't get the roll. We'll go to the line. Nicole Willingham picking up her first. You have to find those players on the weak side. Mazanti is a three-point specialist. And the same thing here. You penetrate, you draw, and you have to have your feet set. If you can see the palms, that ball is going to go. Got it loaded already before that ball gets Locked there. Locked and loaded. That's where you should have the uh, Life Lock Protection Program. <laughs> <laughs> Megan, the rookie from Liberty with the miss at the free throw line. 
The 09 WNBA All-Star Balloting, presented by T-Mobile, now open, helps select this year's All-Star teams. And the enter to win a trip to the Mohegan Sun for the All-Star Game. Log on to WNBA.com to cast your vote today. That's the thing about the league. It is a sprint to the finish. We're already talking about the All-Star Game. High low to Willingham and the foul over the back on Frazier. We just started the season. And we're talking about who is MVP, as you just said, who might be on that all-star team. You have to start fast in this league. Hammond, the one who picked up the foul. Second team foul on the Silver Stars. It is. I mean, you cannot afford to have a slow start. Ask the Phoenix Mercury last year. They were 0-4 and never were able to catch fire. It, it puts too much pressure on you to win basketball games uh, when you're on long road trips. And, you know, I look at what happened the other night against the Seattle Storm. You have to win those getaway games if you're for a game. You have a three-game road trip starting here in San Antonio. You must win that getaway game at your place. Great ball movement. Johnson can't buy it from three-point land. Johnson on the run to Willingham. Nice catch under control. The foul on Young, her first. So we get a break in the action with 2.54 left and a two-point lead for San Antonio. And back to the AT&T Center in just a moment. Inspiring and creating positive change. And a reminder of Blake Griffin and more future NBA stars. I'll be at Madison Square Garden Thursday night. The WNBA, or sorry, NBA draft, excuse me. Be there for every pick. See which team lands the best incoming class. 7 o'clock Eastern with the NBA draft preview. Will it be Blake Griffin? Yes. I think so. And uh, we've brainwashed you pretty much. On w, I put w the W in front, right? Yeah. It's a good thing. Seven all here, Nancy. Good one going on. There's under three minutes left until the break. Well, the Mercury did a much better job cleaning up their defense and taking away the layups that they had given San Antonio early in the first quarter. Hammond pulls back as Smith was a little bit late. The rebound by Willingham. And the other thing, Kelly Mazanti comes off the bench, does her job. She's three for three from three. It's a lot of threes. Angela Smith letting another one fly. They, Phoenix is doing their work beyond that line, not inside. Tipped away, out of bounds, and it will stay with the Silver Stars. Pondexter back, Nicole Oldie back on the floor for Phoenix. Everybody talks about Phoenix's offense because they are number one in the league. They've done this for four years in a row now, averaging 92 points a game. But I think this year with the length and the athleticism that they have, they can be a much better, more aggressive basketball team. You have options now. And you've got a point guard, two point guard to run the show. Yeah, I mean, all over the floor. What do you oh, got, they they got, got Ian Hughes talking about the hand checks. Clark Stevens, Daryl Humphrey, Jeffrey Smith, your three officials tonight. Stays at this end. Good play by Kelly Mazanti. Just trying to keep the ball alive. Aaron, Aaron. You don't it's have to have it. <laughs> Mazanti, three for four now. On the move a little too much that time, man. Well, pretty much she's going to have her feet set if she's going to nail that three-point shot. She's not going to take a lot of shots off the move. Young gets Oldie in the air, draws the foul. Nice move by Sophia Young. Uh, she just does a wonderful job of getting underneath you, taking away your recovery lanes, and then making you commit the contact. Oldie's first, team's fourth. Tough assignment for Nicole Oldie to try to stay with Sophia Young on the perimeter. <laughs> Reminder coming up at the half, the IHOP halftime report. Richard Jefferson traded, guess where? I bet you he went to, I don't know. Right here. Right here. Right here. San Antonio. Talking with Tarazi and the College World Series, Texas and LSU game two. I guess the uh, the trade for uh, Amari Stoudemire to Phoenix uh, with Jefferson going there uh, seemed really good, huh? 
Young with the second free throw. It's a one-point lead for San Antonio. Smith, that was a three. So Rodzi blocked from behind. Riley from behind, Darling in front of her. So Helen Darling picking up the foul. That's her second. How about Phoenix doing all their work from three-point land? They're 0 for 9 from two-point range this quarter. Well, that's what they do. They pull you out beyond three. Then when they've taken enough of those and they open up some gaps to the basket, they attack you. And two. they're all over the offensive glass. I'm going to do Dan Hughes, though. You listen to Corey Gaines for a moment. He talked to his team about making them beat us from in front of us. Just don't let them get behind us and get inside with that, the slashing style. Yeah, but you don't want to take that too literally, let them take shots in front of us, because that's really what Phoenix does. They like to shoot over you, especially from the perimeter. You take that away, and you run at them, then they're a slashing team. Darling off the wrong foot, off the glass and in. Got to step on Tarazi. She has had incredible improvements this year. Helen Darling's lost about 20, 25 pounds. She's quicker. We know she's a smart player. And again, just a good, solid pass. We're not going to make a lot of mistakes. Under a minute, Pondexter with the miss. Hammond's going to control it. Pair of parrot blue. She was joking. Your teammates call her purple blue. Can't pronounce her name. Pondexter. Quick shot off the glass over Hammond. Uh, see what happens when that defense doesn't have a chance to get set. Off are, they, the turnover. are they allowed to shoot a two? I don't think so. They just made one. I saw the scouting report that says, do not shoot two, just threes. <laughs> you know, we, we, we talk about players who get better each year. Corey Gaines has gotten better this year. He's more confident. He understands his role as a head coach now. Tipped out's going to call a timeout as they get it back with 15.6 seconds. I think you're right. You go through that learning curve, and the guy who played point guard at LMU for Paul Westhead played with Hank Gathers, Bo Kimball, and knows how to run this type of a system. Shot. Come on. Come on. All right, Corey Gaines setting up this final possession with 15.6 left. Phoenix with the one-point lead. A chance to remind you right now about Major League Baseball coming your way. Wednesday Night Baseball presented by Smirnoff Ice, ESPN 2, 7 Eastern. The Yankees taking on the Braves. And Sunday Night Baseball presented by Taco Bell kicking off on ESPN at 8 Eastern with the Yankees going across town to take on the Mets. Both games part of the ALNL Showdown presented by State Farm on ESPN, ESPN 2, and ESPN ESPN360.com. Here you go. Final possession. Johnson controls. Guarded by another Johnson. Vicky. Backdoor cut to Rossi to the hoop. Pretty play. Absolutely. That was a drawn up play in the huddle by Corey Gaines. Hoping the overplay on the wing. To Paraglou. Nope. Phoenix a 10-3 run to close out the half. So a back and forth game. Remember, San Antonio had that seven-point lead in the first quarter, but Phoenix, with some help from their bench and a lot of help from Diana Tarazzi taking the lead as we send it to Rebecca. Becky, this game being played at a very quick tempo. Considering the type of week you've had, how concerned are you with fatigue in the second half? Uh, I feel good right now. Um, you know, we're, we're shooting the ball well. I think this is a little bit more of their tempo, so we got to be able to play at two speeds, slow it down when we want to. But I think also we can uh, push some stuff in transition because uh, they hit the glass pretty hard and they're putting up a lot of shots. So we're going to get a lot of opportunities. We just got to, you know, put the ball in the hole. When you have two players like Diana and Cappy out in the perimeter, what can you do to try to slow them down? Well, obviously you want to just try to make their looks as difficult as possible. They're great players. You know they're going to get their points, but you want to make them try to score over top of you. Don't foul them. Don't put them to the free throw line. Don't give them anything easy. Bring congestion. But I think, you know, a lot of these other the bon uh, Bonner and these other guys, they're keys too. Mazzani getting off. So we got to contain these other people as well. All right, Becky, thank you. Terry, they're trying to bring congestion back here in San Antonio. Ah, there you go, Rebecca. Well, we got second half to work on. It was three for four. Kevin Pondexter getting into the three ball party. She hit one from long range. Mazzani hit three of them. Chirazi's got 14 in the game. Look at that three point shooting, though. Seven of 12 for the Mercury. The Silver Stars just three of 10. They're doing their work in the paint. 
They wanted to get out and run a little bit with Phoenix, though. Only three fast break points in the first half for the Silver Stars. Let's check in with Rebecca Lobo, who talked to the head coaches, right? Actually, I talked to someone posing as the head coach and Diana Taurasi when she came out of the locker room and she said, the second half, we just need to keep pushing tempo. We got good stops in that first half, but we couldn't come up with the ball. And then she said, we just got to get the rebounds. And guys, she's worked on not following the season in that first half. She had no fouls, but she smiled and said, that just means I've got six for the second half. <laughs> Going to work right away, getting it inside to Tangela Smith, but she misses. Here comes Vicki Johnson. San Antonio looks to push it again. Well, I think Vicky Johnson, she's going to handle the ball a lot more, and is what Dan Hughes was saying. They have to find shots, easy shots, just like that, to give Sophia Young or to give Becky Hammond opportunities for open shots. Look like our highlights from the first half, the way they opened up the game. Oh, that look, almost looked like a little bit of a flex cut right there. Smith took the extra step, kept the pivot foot down, went to the left hand. And she is so long and understands where she is in relation to where the defender is playing her. Pondexter opens up the second half on Becky Hammond. Johnson, the floater, not close that time. But Terry, you can see that the Mercury are no longer trying to screen, uh, trap, screen, roll. They're just going over or switching it. Kathy Pondexter, out of control, picks up the offensive foul. That's her first. That's why Helen Darling is so important to this basketball team. She gives up the body. She's not going to do a lot of spectacular things. She's just going to do the right things. If you're an opposing head coach, with Dan Hughes, you know, your first thought is, well, the Mercury can't keep shooting like they've been from three-point range. Oh, yes, they can. That's what they do, as you said. You can't rely on them starting to miss. Riley misses at that end. Here comes Tamika Johnson right by Darling to the hoop. Tamika Johnson, who was a rookie of the year in this league, told me earlier today, she said, you know, I lost so much of my confidence last year in Los Angeles on and off the court. She has it back now. She's understanding Corey Gaines' system, which takes time because you have to reprogram how to play this game in his style. Hammond, her first field goal since the 427 mark back in the second quarter. Excuse me, the first quarter. Underneath, Smith had it blocked. Here comes Becky. Somehow, she finds a way to get through the lane. Look at that. Outside to Young, setting her up. Smith the rebound. Well, you're right, because Becky Hammond, nobody in the league can change direction or pace better than Becky Hammond. Tipped out of bounds, it'll be San Antonio basketball. Okay, so watch the speed, the contrast. Here's Tamika Johnson. She gets inside the shoulder of Helen Darling, forces her to open up, and has an easy lane to the basket. And at the other end, Hammond able to do it. Not maybe with blazing speed, but a change of speed. Change of speed, but she has gotten quicker as she has taken care of her body. We talked about the conditioning that she's done. She is ripped. I don't think those are two words we ever associated no. with Becky early in her career. Huh. Tarazi off balance, no doubt about it. If you're darling right now, you just try to keep her in front of you. I mean, I, you can't stop that. No, that was a good play. Make her shoot jump shots and just hope for the best. D with 16 in the game. And here comes Hammond. Remember, fatigue will be a factor. He went to play for the Russian national team in Latvia at the European Championships this past week. Just came back on Sunday. Well over 5,000 miles each way. Hey, I took a 40-minute flight from Dallas, and it was 100 degrees, and I'm tired myself. <laughs> and you're in shape. <laughs> Personal foul on Pondexter, and that's her second. I just got the feeling that you were feeling sorry for Becky Hammond because she was probably in first class. No, she was. She, she was pampered. She, was. she probably had those little eye things over her, the little sleep eyes. She actually said she slept the entire flight from Latvia to New York. <laughs> Angela Smith with the foul. That's her third. You know, the whistles, which were not forthcoming much at all, all of a sudden have come in bunches. Still a three-point lead for the Mercury. I still think that San Antonio has to work their half-court offense, run these on-ball screens, and make the Mercury work and chew up some clock. Five on the shot clock as it's knocked out. So we talk about 
her leaving and missing a couple of games in the WNBA. What do you think I mean, about the fact that she left to play for the Russian national team? You can log on to WNBA. Dot com and give us your thoughts. We'll uh, we'll give you the full rundown when we come back and how you can offer your opinion. Oh, now, Mister Argo, no. Argo uh, running right now is back cut. They're running back cut. So now. All right, ESPN.com backslash women's basketball. Are you okay with Becky Hammond missing NBA game, WNBA games to play for the Russian national team? You've offered your thoughts already. Her teammates have, but we'll hear from the fans. I'm anxious to hear what, what they have to say because a lot of people are split. Because you know, we think of loyalty as one team, but she has two teams that she's loyal to. Shot clock at five. They run this play out of the break. Fade away, no. Young, pretty good play set up for Young. Willingham, under control. Nice look from Johnson and a nice catch from LaCole. If you snooze, you lose. You must get back on defense. Remember what we said, vertical basketball. You see the back of the jerseys. That's a no-no. Johnson got loose along the baseline. Yeah, I'm throwing this out there. I know we have the Lisa Leslie retirement tour. There should be one for Vicki Johnson because she has just been marvelous in her 13 years in this league. She deserves it equally as much. Mako Willingham will go to the line, a chance for a three-point play. The foul on Darling, that's her third. Blue right here, I need one blue. Co Willingham, the sixth year player from Auburn, and a 71% free throw shooter at the line. Another terrific pickup by Ann Meyer. She played for Mike Tebow. She's a great player, very good player around the basket, very physical, and she offers another dimension, especially she can shoot the three. Led the league in field goal percentage last year. She shot 57%. Largest lead for the Mercury. Angela Smith out ahead of everybody off the steal. Oh, that's where Becky Hammond has to read the double coming at her, especially with Tangela and her long arms, and you lose your passing angles. Yeah, you might need a timeout right now, Dan Hughes, for a number of reasons. It's a 9-2 Phoenix run. You're not handling the basketball. The pressure's getting to you, and at some point, fatigue might set in, as we mentioned, with Hammond and the rest. <laughs> San Antonio, a key part of the game for the Silver Stars. They trail by eight, and right now, the pressure both on offense and defense of the Mercury getting to them. Well, it is, and Dan Hughes, even in his timeout just now, said, if I have to give you a blow, I will. If you need a rest, I'll give it to you, because he understands the pace of the game. Rebecca, what do you hear? Well, Dan Hughes was very fired up in that last huddle, and he looked at Becky Hammond and said, they're going to trap you. Don't complain to the officials. Just be tough. And just like Nancy said, totally the players if you're tired ask for a sub he just isn't going to change anything in terms of x's and o's he said we just haven't played to the level of effort we expect we have to attack be tougher now let's go play young trying to do that there's the miss tarazi the rebound hammond may have had a point the last time though because there was a kick ball that was not called willingham going to work inside Snell the rebound. Here comes Becky. They really exploited those double teams early, but not as of late. So now the Mercury are mixing up their defenses, and it looks like, you know, maybe this could be part of Becky being away for a week and not having the proper preparation time. Now she talked about the fact that it's a different system. She goes back and forth with the Russian national team and now the Silver Stars. Now on the mark, it's a five-point game. Johnson right to the hoop. Thanks, Sue. Just a, a much better job of moving their offensive players up, taking away the double team or the weak side help of the Silver Stars and having that lane to the basket. Wiley left the wall off the double. Tarazi gets there late. That's a three. Dean tied up at the other end. Jump ball and a nice play. Belinda Snell's made a nice contribution off the bench. Well, those two played against each other in practice for many years when she was in Phoenix. So she knows these game as well as anybody. Second matchup between these two teams. They met on June 6th. And the Mercury winning at home 90 
to 79. They'll play two more games as the season goes along, but those are in August. That's good. Here we go. Right here, going straight up. Go. It's the highest scoring game this year for San Antonio, but mostly because they were trailing the number one scoring team in the league. Yeah, that, that usually makes you look a little better offensively. Yeah. Other than that, they haven't scored more than 61 points in a game. Here. The foul is on, on Snell. In most cases, when the ball is on the strong side, you jump to the ball, but it's a play for Tarasi, and she knows that, so she's getting up into her life lock jersey. Oh, I like it. Second foul on Snell. Trying to slow down Phoenix, shooting 64% this half. On deck two. Good defense by at least Lawson Wade, taken away by Snell. The window on the run, off balance, and the foul on Johnson. And Belinda Snell's given them a burst of energy off the bench. Don't forget, just getting things started in the WNBA season. LA at Seattle on NBA TV, 10 o'clock Eastern on Friday. Minnesota, Atlanta, ESPN2 next Tuesday at 7 o'clock. And then also on ESPN2, Sacramento and Seattle on July 9th. How about things out west where they stand? Seattle along with Phoenix at the top. Surprising, obviously, that the Silver Stars are 1-3 and three right now. Tip really in the league. It doesn't look like people thought it would look at this point. Well, I know that I didn't think it would look like that because I was uh, pulling up the standings on ESPN.com about four days ago and I looked at it and I went, oh my gosh, you would have <laughs> never predicted this and we're the experts. And it just, it, whether it's been injuries or whether teams just drafted well and those players are productive, this shows the parity in the WNBA. On Dexter, oh, what a strong move by Cappy. Well, L.A., for example, struggling a bit. They've had injuries. And in the East, I mean, the teams who have really owned the top of the standings, not the Detroit, off to a slow start. Connecticut off to a slow start. Tarazi picks up her first foul. There's the West. Seattle and Phoenix up top. And... Sacramento starting one and five so far. Well, they have a, a, a very hard time with injuries as well. Lawson was injured, not in great shape. You know, Brunson hasn't been able to get back to the court. Denny Busick's team is missing a lot of offensive punch. You need your full complement of players considering rosters are reduced this year and you only have 11. And Washington at four and one. Chicago, four wins already. Atlanta, you mentioned them with three wins. We'll see them next week against Minnesota. Uh, Julie Plank has done a wonderful job with that team in Washington. And unfortunately for them, Marissa Coleman just went down with an ankle injury. She was having a fabulous rookie season. Bonner got a step on Riley, and Ruth couldn't get there in time. She picks up the foul. She's just fun to watch. I mean, it's almost like watching Woody from Toy Story. Okay? You don't know where the bones are going, but you know she's a really, really fantastic player. And the compliment to Tangela Smith, they can either can go high or low. It's a good movie, by the way. I, you know, I got the reference, but it's been a while. 12 for 12, by the way. Phoenix from the line tonight. No, that's what you, 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 that's what allows them to get to the foul line is you push up on the three-point line and there's gaps to the basket and now you're reaching in and you're fouling them on the drive. Snell couldn't handle the pass and it goes back to Phoenix. Now that's a tough pass to handle. You're throwing it behind your shooter. Corey Gaines, who was ejected late in that game against Seattle the other day on Sunday with 14 seconds left. Young takes it back for the Silver Stars. He's arguing the call. And 
argued it a little bit too much, Nancy. Well, you, you have to stay focused. And, and, uh, I think you mentioned it, or Rebecca mentioned it earlier, where Diane Trazzi is not arguing. No! Corey Gaines has said, let it go. Happy. Just turn around and go. Happy. Get in, get in. Come on. Getting Pondexter back on the floor. This time for Diana Tarazi. It's tough to tell Diana Tarazi not to argue. I mean, it's in her makeup. That's how she plays. It is, but that's part of the allure of having Diana in this league is she's passionate. She cares. Go. And she's going to tell you that she's passionate. Monier control. He's uh, guarded by a loose loss and wave. And the Zanny, their paraclete, takes away her three. It's a very interesting combination on the floor right now for the uh, Mercury. Yeah, the extra step taken, the walking violation on but I, I get the Toy Story thing now. I saw it there. I think you're right. She's very deceptive to want to bond her because she looks skinny like that and she is but she's strong she is not afraid of contact she'll mix it up underneath she's asleep riley can shoot that you hesitate coming out on her but she's proven she can knock down the three ruth riley's career has all always been about confidence and belief in herself when she's non-confident she's not aggressive on Dexter, it was changed by Snell. I'm not sure she really fouled her. I'm going to call her for the foul. Look at Ruth Riley, third on the team. You come off that hard screen, and if you're not there in time, she must go up with it. I think the foul line jump shot is Ruth Riley's best shot. Third foul on Linda Snell. Two shot foul, fourth team foul. Both teams, as a matter of fact, with four in the quarter. He doesn't miss often. 86 percent from the line. Going up and under. She's pushing up, going under. Damn. Becky's not in the game. We're gonna run more. First teams, first team miss tonight from the foul line. You know, heard Corey Gates say Becky's not in the game. What are they gonna run here? So much of the offense centered around Hammond. Well, this is where Ruth Riley, I think, is going to get some opportunities here. Crazy to call the blocking foul. Yeah, fortunate call for San Antonio. You don't really have a primary scorer on the floor for the Silver Stars, so how about this move by Frazee as he goes hard to the basket? You like the call? Looks like she was there to me. No, I don't like the call because you can't take three dribbles from the top or two dribbles from the top and have a defender waiting on you and get the, the charge call and, and get to the foul line. One year to foul her first. So they're over the limit. Hammond continues to rest. Well, the adjustment in the second half right there by the Stars is they've taken away the three-point shooting of the Mercury. They've only taken one three-point shot in the second half. The Mercury had it, but they came back in from out of bounds, so they'll stay at this end. So what's that play? The kiss goodbye play. That play was a mess. Snell out of the ring. She's got long range, but she knew it right away. So the Mercury, which had a three-point lead at halftime and held Becky Hammond to just three points in the first half, lead by two. Hot Dexter fouled. Riley may have gotten all ball up top. They call it down low on the body. This is just old school. This is just a give and go. They ran this when you played. You give it, you front cut the defender, but that is a very nice block by Ruth Riley. I couldn't see what happened downstairs and maybe some contact. You know, there weren't laces on the ball when I played. It wasn't that long ago. Were you and Dr. Nation at texting yeah, each you. other back then? You know, it was a pain to have to get it out of the peach basket after every bucket. That's right, he was tweeting. <laughs> Not quite. <laughs> what should we do with this basket? Anybody have a scissor? 
Jump ball after every bucket. Cappy gets the roll. Under a minute here in the third. Two of the stars resting. Tarazi and Becky Hammond. Lawson Wade. A three. Uh-uh. Crazy kept it alive. Mazzani pulls it down. She's a really good athlete. She's not just a three-point shooter. And by the way, her brother played baseball at Old Dominion. Happy the hesitation up and under and draws the foul. <laughs> Snell, that's her fourth. There's no audio right now, but I think we know what Dan Hughes is thinking. <laughs> He's not saying a thing, but the physical look tells it all. When Kathy Pondexter has the ball in her right hand, God. she is going to the rim. Want it? When it's in her left hand, she's going to try and pull up for her rhythm shot. She's scouting the floor. Well, watch that. Good heads up. Six point lead for Phoenix. They're 18 of 19 from the free throw line, plus nine. Twelve second difference. Shot clock game clock. Crazy alone along the way. Shot clock is off. They can take the final shot of the third if they want. Bonner out of control. Where's she going with seven seconds? They get it back though. Oldie, no foul call. That'll do it here in the third. A wild finish on that possession. Looked like a couple of calls could have been made. They weren't. Weren't made. Very physical and poor selection of what you want to do. So we head to the fourth. Phoenix with the lead on the road by four over the Silver Stars. You said in many ways this is their first game. Having Hammond back, having Vicki Johnson back. This is the test. It begins right now. they got ten minutes left. Well, I think they've done a very nice job, especially players off the bench. But when you get 22 points from Crazy and from Snell, that bodes well for you when Young and Hammond are not shooting the ball well. Nicole Willingham picking up her second. Look at the game on June 6th, the matchup. 45 points between Hammond and Young. Tonight, just 12. Stars have to be stars to win in the league. Well, thank you. You must go to your go-to players. They are averaging, as you see, so many points a game. The offense revolves around them, and that's vintage Becky Hammond right there to the rim. Hammond gets loose. She has seven in the game. But she's so good at rubbing her player off the screen. You don't have to have a crunching screen. You just have to know how to use it. Snell guarding Tarazi. They've had a drought last four minutes, the Mercury have. But we talk about how Becky knows how to change speed. She slows it up, then she gets a burst, a little ball fake, kind of freezes the defender, and she has that open lane to the basket. She's got every trick in the toolbox. She it, knows how to use it. makes her that much quicker. The knowledge of, of how to use that and when. And well, she knows how to freeze you because she has all those elements that don't really rely just on speed and quickness. Yeah. It's guile. Megan Frazee with her second foul. Tarazi gets the roll at the line. Hammond just three for ten tonight, though. And we'll see. Coming down the stretch in the fourth quarter, she's been able to rest through the third and should be fresh, but you, you don't know what time your body clock is on when you've been halfway across the world and back. That is very true, but I think, as you know, as a player, when you get into a game, you're so conditioned to block stuff out. You just play on emotion. And she went and played, if you weren't with us, with the Russian national team in the European Championship just got back Sunday. Tamika Johnson answers at the other end. Now, if you're going to make her play defense, and Tamika Johnson's going to force her to play a little bit, that will kind of help in tiring her out. Not tired yet. Down the lane goes Hammond for an easy finger roll. Johnson, can she answer? Nope. Line drive jumper cleared by Becky. Willingham picking up Young, sets up Snell. There's a hard screen and a bucket. Count it 
and one. Okay, here, as you see Becky doing what she does well, splitting the defense, pushing out the dribble, and now the nice screen by Sophia Young. You either have to go over the top of that if you're Tarazi, or slide under it, or maybe even get a show of the hand by your teammate just to try and contest that shot. Second foul on Tarazi, and Young goes to the free throw line. We're tied at 71. <laughs> And when, when Diana Trossi hits you, it's like a freight train. So you're, you're very deserving of those foul shots if you're Sophia Young. One point lead for the Silver Stars. <laughs> Snell, great anticipation. On the move, the bucket. Belinda Snell's been a big part of this game. Three-point lead when they took the lead a moment ago. It's the first lead since it was 40-39. Hot next to answers at the other end. But Terry Snell's done it with defense as well. Two steals, but she's doing a fabulous job of jumping the passing lanes. She, this is a well-scouted team right now. There's the pressure in the double. Crazy walking violation. Indecision. Well, there's no indecision on Snell. Watch this. She knows exactly. She doesn't go to Diana. She goes to the ball to cut off the angle and goes underneath and allows the defense to clear on the layup. She's had a huge game for San Antonio. Willingham, one-on-one -on -one with Crazy. There's the foul. Megan picks up her third. I'm a big fan of giving young people, rookies, a chance to play basketball and have on-court learning experiences. That's going to make her better down the road. Lico, a 71% free throw shooter. One point lead. Don't forget the NBA draft coming your way Thursday night. From Madison Square Garden. Kicking off at 7 o'clock Eastern with the NBA draft preview. Always a big night. I'm watching it. Woods fans. Blake Griffin going to give L.A. something else to cheer about, especially for the Clippers. Clippers fans awfully excited. Been hearing it from them out in L.A. Uh, for the last two months. Silver Stars, five of their last five. Yep, there's the miss. On the baseline, Sophia Young, the 15-footer. We're tied again. Solid rebounding effort. That was one of the problems this year for the Silver Stars. They were not getting on the defensive board, and they must get offensive putbacks. Inside, outside to Pondexter and Cappy. <laughs> Willingham, the great look. Three-point lead. Johnson, a little too aggressive. And Kevin Pondexter has the total skill set. She knows the ball is coming back to her. Her feet are set. She's got a beautiful release. She can hurt you from three, which sets up her drive because you have to push out on her, and she can also defend. Make sure she was behind the line in Willingham. Great look cross court. Underneath Young, if it goes, no. Tamika Johnson on the reach. Fourth personal on Johnson. A couple of fouls in about six seconds for her, and she'll go take a seat. Keisha Swanye comes on. And I believe they're saying that Sophie was not in the act of shooting, that it was on the floor. They are. Well, Dan Hughes can't believe it. There's a gather on that. Your point. Well, that's a gather. We're not going to change it. Looks like she was in the act of shooting to me. Uh, you know, even if you say she's gathering to go up, that's the act of shooting. Yeah, she was. And you just have to play through that. But if Phoenix can get out on the break like this, this is what makes them so special. Vicky Johnson just forced that turnover. Tom Dexter had the handle. She thought she got fouled. It'll go back to the Silver Stars. Well, she took away the angle of Tom Dexter going to the basket. You, you're screen. Talking to Becky Hammond. 
Here comes that screen. They get the back door. Oh, good pressure on the ball, taking it away. Scramble down low. It stays at this end. Well, they had the back door cut, but the pressure on the basketball took it away. So 10 on the shot clock. Quick timeout. Three-point lead for Phoenix on the road. Sport from their bench. Matter of fact, 16 bench points, 10 to 16 in the game. Dan Hughes will take that any time. Ball on a bounce with 10 on the shot clock. So Hammond going to work around the screen. Floater off the wrong foot. Snell's had a big night, 17 in the game, and Hammond has come alive in this quarter. Not a surprise that Becky Hammond is looking to be a little bit more assertive offensively in the fourth. Stolen down low, they get it back. Here comes Snell. Only averages seven a game, so it's 17, and she's made big plays defensively, too. Well, she's got four steals in the game now, and she's an offensive player if you really want to define who she is. Reach in, take it away, Tangela Smith. Dan Hughes can't believe there was no foul. Pondexter, off balance, off the glass, and a technical foul has just been called on Dan Hughes. Uh, that's a tough one right now for San Antonio because this is a huge game. You and I have been talking about this. A huge game at 1-3 and three for San Antonio. Four home games. They must win this game. Tarazi to the line. Yeah, Dan fought. They were fouled. 32. Come on, Clark. They're not defending it. Now, here's what he's talking about right there. The reach. Did Smith get arm or ball? From that angle, it is really hard to tell. But, you know, these kids have such quick hands. Talking about Hammond coming alive. Pondexter with 26 in the game, and Cappy has eight in this quarter. Snell, not this time. Riley, the offensive rebound. Throws it back forward. Over and back violation. And that might not have been the person to throw the ball to, but Ruth Riley is so conditioned to giving the ball to Becky in those situations. Yeah, usually it's a good idea to look for number 25 when you're in trouble. Exactly. Hammond making it tough, taken away. Young, two on one. Becky keeps it in the foul. And they do call it on Smith this time. Defense by San Antonio all over the ball. It, they make you lob the pass. Now watch how savvy. Eyes are up. That little pump fake freezes the defender. I, I just it is a clinic for how to play ball. See how she just froze Tangela Smith with that little eye look off play. 14 in the game, nine in the quarter for Becky Hammond. We're in the penalty at the 443 mark. Terry, with players like Becky Hammond, it doesn't matter what they have for three. It's what they have at the end of four. Johnson answers as Hammond was late getting out there. Well, how big has she been to this lineup, Tamika Johnson? Uh, this is a perfect situation for her. She said she's learned more from Diana and Kathy how to love the game, how to enjoy the game, and how to play it harder. Snell, no foul. Somehow she got it up and in over Tarazi. The career high for Snell, 19 points. Got those stitches in her cheek near her eye socket. The last game against Connecticut, caught an elbow. Tarazi, uh-uh. For the momentum, it switched. They still trail by one. I really look for Diana to get more involved on the offensive end. They've taken away her three-point shot. She hasn't really gone hard to the basket. And then one-on-one -on -one with Johnson gets by her. Sets up Snell. Three on the shot clock. Three ball won't go. Johnson, another chance. Belinda, this time, can she get it? Nope. Two wide open looks. Well, very unusual because she's such an accomplished scorer, but see, there's Tarasi. Diana's the one who looks like she's laboring a little bit, not Becky. She must have answered you, though. She came back quickly. First field goal since the 7 14 mark in the third quarter.
Smith blocked out of bounds. So we'll have it with 18 left on the shot clock. 2.53 to go and a three-point lead for Phoenix. I can tell you the player that needs the blow right now is Tarasi. Snell, career high, eyes the basket, makes the basket. Tarasi doing what she does best, making points happen. Guys, thanks. See you in a bit here in San Antonio. Nancy, you get the sense just listening into that last huddle as we had a chance to do the urgency felt by the Silver Stars. I know it's only the fifth game of the year, but they're one in three back at home for the first at of four at home. They sense that they need to start winning right now. I believe that they do need to start winning right now. You must do it. You have your star players back in Johnson and Hammond. You're playing at home, and you cannot get mired in the bottom of the West this early in the season. Silver Stars led by three, 74-71, but a run by Phoenix. There's the foul. Tarazi will go to the free throw line. Sophia Young picked up her second. That's the last thing uh, Dan Hughes wanted. You want to play solid defense and make the Mercury shoot over you, not commit a foul where they can set their defense and a good foul shooter. Good. Not a, a terrific foul shooter knocks it down. 91 percent. See, there you go. <laughs> I said good. You said great. <laughs> Always happens, doesn't it? Now, normally, this is the time of the game, if it's tight, that Corey Gaines, Phoenix, counts on wearing you down. Late in the game, the running style, the offensive pressure, making you work all night long. We'll see if it happens. Yeah, I believe they're going to trap Becky Hammond with the ball anytime she has it on screen roll. Blocked by Smith. Dan Hughes has already picked up a technical. Was up on that one, arguing. See, this is where you've mentioned that Tamika Johnson is a natural point guard. You put Tarasi and Pondexter on the wings, and you let her find you. There's Cappy. Good close by Helen Darling. Offensive foul with that left hand. They caught her that time. That's her third. It's a good call. Helen Darling is so strong down low. It's hard to push her off, and you've got to create that space. We've hit the two-minute mark. Hammond left alone. Becky buys it from three-point range. It's a one-point game. You cannot allow that to happen. You leave Becky Hammond that wide open. Taken away by Snell, the block and the foul on Tangela Smith, and a chance for San Antonio to take the lead. Two errors right there by the Mercury, allowing Becky Hammond to be all by herself from three, and then on the steal by Becky, and then the pass to Snell. Fifth foul on Smith. Snell. Wow, we asked you about uh, Becky Hammond playing with the Russian national team and the European Championships missing two games. And you logged on to ESPN.com. You okay with it? 54% says yes, 46% no. Kind of close, but go ahead and give it a nod. Everybody's going to have opinion. Everybody's entitled to it. At the end of the day, Becky Hammond will decide what's best for her. Offensive foul, giving it back to the Silver Stars. Diana Tarazi picking up her third. And she said she was going to save some for the second half, and she has done that right now. Well, that's a huge foul here with a minute and a half left. Hammond operates around that screen. Pulls back. That's a two. Tarazi with the rebound. Mercury looking to run. Can't be Pondexter. The hesitation. Nope. Smith. And the foul on Sophia Young, I believe. It is. Who expects that call at this time in the game? It's a familiar look on the face of Dan Hughes tonight. I have two timeouts, right? 
is tough. You know, Kathy Pondexter goes in as she should, breaks down the defense, and it takes your rebounding lanes away from you, and that allows Bonner to get position. That's the fourth team foul on the Silver Stars. Here comes Kathy Pondexter over Darling, fades away, tipped up, out of bounds. San Antonio basketball. The biggest problem in the fourth quarter for the Mercury has been that they've turned the ball over seven times. They did a great job earlier in the game of limiting their turnovers. Under a minute to go. Chance for the Silver Stars to take the lead again. Young will go to the free throw line. So Pondexter picking up the foul, and that's four on her. Young doing a wonderful job of taking advantage of the mismatch on the switch right here. She knew that she had Pondexter on her left side, and the delivery pass was perfect for her to isolate. Sophia, 69% from the line, misses the first. Now you win games by knocking down foul shots. You must finish teams off at the line. So 12 of 19 tonight. Phoenix. 24-26. One of two in a one-point lead for San Antonio. Tanika Johnson controls, guarded by Hammond. Hondexter operates on Darling. Slides by. Kathy stopped off the heel. Darling the rebound. Didn't have to press it. Johnson tipped away by Tarazi in a loose ball foul. It's going to be called on Diana Tarazi. To the ball. You got it? These fourth, you heard Dan Hughes say, hang on to the ball. We don't need that right now. How about the hustle play by Tamika Johnson running down the court, deflecting it, and then trying to keep it in play? Snell at the line. She's had a career night. Adds to that. Twenty-one in the game. And Corey Gaines up at midcourt talking to one of the officials. Eleven ties, twelve lead changes. Phoenix led by eight. San Antonio led early by seven. The miss. Sophia Young gets it back. That's her quickness. Almost a six-second difference. Shot clock, game clock. So they're going to guard out here. And you just have to keep the ball in the middle of the floor. If you're Becky Hammond, you have what they want and need. And you don't want to foul her. Hammond slices through the miss, tipped up. She gets it back. No shot clock. And they foul Hammond, who is a, well, one of the best in the league, if not the best, from the line. Hammond has not missed a foul shot this season. Routinely over 90% in the league. One of the best all-time foul shooters in history of the WNBA. 4.8 seconds left. Hammond trying to add to the two-point lead and does. And obviously, here's a big one right now. She could shoot foul shots if it was a 30-hour flight. 13 points in the quarter. Big free throw in a four-point lead. You don't foul. Let Phoenix take a shot to stay away from the shooter. Johnson, that'll do it. And San Antonio comes up with a big win for Dan Hughes. They end on a 7-0 run. Hammond with the big free throws after running down the loose ball in the corner on the rebound. And they move to 2-3 and three on the year. You can't overstate how big this win is in the mind of Dan Hughes. You're a team that went to the WNBA Finals a year ago. Even though you got swept, you came back with your core group. It is huge for you to get off to a great start this season. They didn't. This could turn their season around. Tough one to take for the Mercury. Dropping to 5-3 and three on the year. They led. For much of the game, they went 
Last three minutes, 30 seconds without a field goal. They missed their last five shots. Let's send it over to Rebecca. Becky, after the week you had, the thought was that you would be fatigued in this game. Instead, you had 14 fourth quarter points. Why were you able to come alive at the end? Uh, you know, I just want to bring a lot of energy. And normally that's when they get people gassed. And we talk about it in the huddle. You know, this is where they really put people away. So we wanted to come out with a lot of energy. And it's a big game for us. I thought, you know, this is like a must win for us. So just dug deep and we made plays down the stretch. Snelly was great tonight. So After starting the season one and three, how much did your team talk about the importance of this game? Well, it's huge. It's a Western Conference game. Phoenix is playing very well right now. And uh, we just needed it for our own, you know, our own confidence. So uh, we got a couple more home games. We got to take care of business. But one game at a time. And, you know, sometimes it's one minute at a time. And you just keep hanging in there, keep hanging in there, and give yourself a chance to win. And it was just a great team effort. I mean, we have a lot of people in double figures tonight. So it's it a great team effort. Right, Becky, thank you. Terry? All right, Rebecca, 19 in the game for Becky Hammond. Most of those in the second half, especially the fourth quarter, Linda Snell, 21 points in the win. 91 to 87, the final. San Antonio comes up with the victory at home in the AT&T Center tonight. Sports Center, NBA Draft Special coming up next. Our coverage of the WNBA continues Tuesday, Minnesota and Atlanta on June 30th. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports for our entire crew. I'm Terry Gannon. So long, everybody, from San Antonio. They say it's all right. They say it's all right. Say it's all right. Have a good time. Cause it's all right. Everybody knows that it's all right. Whoa, it's all right.